Hey guys, welcome to Epic Generation. I'm Christine, the creator of the show, and I'm so glad you can join me and my friends as we step into a world of fun, learning, and creativity. This show is for awesome kids like you, empowered, positive, inspirational, creative, in short, epic. I know you guys are super smart and talented and have a lot of interests, so I've put together different topics in one show that you're gonna love. Do you guys like DIY stuff? Check out Generation DIY. Do it yourself, where kids showcase their own creations that you can try at home. Who knows, you might be on this show one of these days. Did I say you're super smart? Aha, uh -huh, you're like a sponge. You guys learn so quickly and are not afraid to try new things. You're a generation of learners. So at Gen Learners, my friends will feed your curiosity in math, science, technology, arts, and even life skills. There's no limit to what you can learn. Now, whether you're a first, second, or third generation of Filipino Canadians, it's important to learn about your Philippine heritage because it's part of your identity. And lastly, we have Get Inspired, Generation Epic Talks Inspired, where we meet amazing people who will share their stories that will inspire you to reach for your dreams and be the best version of yourself. So stick around, get comfy, and enjoy. This show is for you. Generation DIY. So today I'll be showing you how to design bags. Have you ever had a bag that was just sitting in your closet? Or have you purchased the bag that you thought was plain looking? Well, today's the day you learn how to jazz them up. What you need is a hot glue gun or some super glue, a bag, any bag will really do, and some material. You can use any material really. I'm gonna do this bag I just, and I'm gonna put a flower on it. And one suggestion I have when putting any decoration on is that you should use around the edge and don't glue the fabric together too much. So here's an example of a simple bag. I just put one flower because I wanted to keep it very simple, but you can add as many as you'd like. So right here I have a beach tote bag. I'm gonna be designing it because I think it's very versatile. And I want to make it very beautiful because I can bring it anywhere. I'm using some old clothes and this, it was something from my toys. So since I've done the pineapple, I'm gonna work on the back of the bag. I'm gonna use these flowers as you can see here. So now I've done the back side, I'm gonna do the handles. So what I do with these old clothes, I just wrap them around the handles and not glue them on. So now I've done the front side, I'm gonna do the back side. Now just for this side, since the flowers are in the way, I'm just going to add a bit of hot glue there, just at the tip of them. Kids, just make sure that you're careful with a hot glue gun, so that's why I suggest using super glue. Whether you're going on a picnic or going to the party, you're ready to rock the world. My name is Dr. Alon Eisenstein and I'm with Pueblo Science and thank you for joining us for this morning for this session for Gen Learners. Today is about balance and center of mass. What we're going to do is we're going to build this balancing bird. Have you ever seen a balancing bird toy? No. Yeah. 
So we're gonna make this balancing bird and we're gonna cut it along the lines and I'm gonna help you out. You need to cut into here as well, right? Follow the solid line, yeah. Don't forget that you need to fold the bird into half along the middle. And then you wanna glue the head together. We have the toothpick. Just put it inside and wedge it until it's spread to as much as you want it to be. We're gonna put some pennies on the wings to balance it and keep the center of mass low. We're gonna add a, a twist to this experiment. So we're not just gonna cut the bird, but we're gonna see if we can balance it on a large popsicle stick. So if I put my finger right down the middle and the mass is equally distributed, you see how it's balancing, right? What happens if I put my finger off center? What will happen if I let go? It's gonna fall, right? Because it's not holding the weight on the center of mass. If I glue another bunch of popsicle sticks on one side, what happened to the center of mass? All right, so let's see if I'm, I'm gonna move it and I'm gonna move it and see, oh, it's falling, Wait. oh, there we go. So now the center of mass moved further away just because the mass is now not equally distributed across the length of the popsicle, right? So we're gonna see what happens if I put a bird here. What will happen to the bird? Can it stay? Maybe, that's what we're gonna test. So we took the bird, the bird balances really nicely because the weight is, is going forward and down, but then we added the weight of the bird to our popsicle stick and now you can see that instead of the center of mass being in the center or off center because of the weight we glued, the bird is then balancing it back. So now the center of mass here is closer to the center where it was originally without any weight. So now the bird is balancing the counterweight and the counterweight is balancing the bird. And if you want to look at it in, in everyday life, when you go to a construction site and you see these huge cranes and you think, how does that flimsy looking piece of metal rod can lift up such huge weights up in the air? It's because they have counterweights on the other side. So next time you see the cranes, look for the counterweight on one side on the opposite side where the hook is, where it's gonna be lifting everything up. And that keeps the balance from flipping up or over um, and, and um, not working, basically. Hey guys, welcome to Rated PG, Pinoy Generation. I'm your host, Gabrielle. And did you know in a lot of Filipino houses, there are karaoke mics? Because a lot of Filipinos like to sing and dance. I love it when you call me Senorita. I told you. I wish I could this is what happens to a Filipino child who loves to sing. To la la, it's to la la. Hey, Tia. Hey. Do you know any Filipino songs? Oh, I know. Totoy Bibo. Oh, God. Oh, galing, ang galing ka sumayaw. Kaling kong gumalaw, kaling kong sumayaw, kaling kong gumalaw, kaling kong sumayaw, bibong bibong gumalaw. Oh, ang galing, ang galing kong sumayaw, kaling kong gumalaw, kaling kong sumayaw, kaling kong gumalaw, kaling kong sumayaw, bibong bibong gumalaw. It's a rap and a double rap. Okay guys, I hope you have some fun doing karaoke at your house. And I hope you enjoy. Bye! Proud to be Pinoy. My name is Sherry and thank you so much for inviting me again to Get Inspired. Today I want to tell you a little bit about 
my charity called ALS Double Play and why I started it. So ALS, ALS stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. It's also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. And it's a disease where you're not able to use any of your voluntary muscles. So you can't play with the carpet, you can't swing back and forth on the pillow, and you can't eat, chew gum, or talk sometimes. Now, sometimes there's about five to 10% of cases of ALS that are genetic. This is called familial ALS. So if ALS runs in your family, you will know because it never skips a generation, never. So if your grandmother had it, one of their children might have it, and then one of their children might have it. So it never skips a generation if you have familial ALS. Now the rest of the people that have ALS is called sporadic ALS. And this happens anywhere in the world to anybody. And we don't know why ALS happens. So, because my brother became sick with ALS, and the more I learned about the disease, I felt like I needed to do something about it. So I started my own charity. I had no experience with it, but I started a charity for ALS because what I wanted to do was know when I raised money, where that money was going, what I was doing to help, and that I was going to make a difference myself in the ALS community. So I started ALS Double Play. Now, ALS Double Play does only two things. We raise awareness for ALS and we fund ALS research. So how many of you guys want to go to University of Toronto? Any? Thinking about it? Maybe. Well, that's where we actually fund the ALS researchers. So when we raise money, all of our money goes to the University of Toronto. At the University of Toronto, they have this big lab, big, huge lab, where they study ALS, and they write papers about ALS, and they share that with other ALS researchers. And they are the largest and most internationally published ALS research lab in the country. So I know that the money that we're raising is going to a really good place. And how do we raise money? We have events. So our very first event was a bowling event. It was a super fun event. We did bowling. How about movies? We did a movie event too. So we had one fun morning where we invited all of our family and friends and we watched Despicable Me. We also do yoga events where we do yoga for three hours. <laughs> we did a walk event where we had people walk five kilometers. Um, but there's also a lot of fun at our events because as you may have sort of guessed, ALS is not a real fun disease. It's really, really sad. So at all of our events, we make sure that it's really, really fun and exciting and that everybody walks away from our event feeling a little bit better because they've done just a little bit of good. So other things that happen are sometimes people have their own events for us. So um, sometimes people do their own parties and they donate us money. We did a paint night this year and they donate money to us. So that's sort of like what we do at the charity. We raise awareness, we raise funds, and then we donate it to the University of Toronto. And that's a little bit about ALS Double Play as a charity. So I hope that was a little bit interesting for you guys. And maybe if you have any questions, we can do that now. Why did you call your charity ALS Double Play? So Double Play is a, blue, um, a baseball term. And I think I mentioned before that ALS is also called Lou Gehrig's disease. So Lou Gehrig was a baseball player. And when I was um, thinking of coming up with the charity, we needed to name it. And my brother and I were watching a Blue Jays game. So I kept throwing out like um, baseball terminology to him and double play kind of stuck. And it also works. So it's a, a baseball term and it's, you know, ALS is related to baseball. And we also only do two things at the charity. We raise awareness and we fund research. And so we thought double kind of worked with that too. So that's why it's called ALS Double Play. Is the Ice Bucket Challenge part of ALS? 
Yes, it is. And um, this year is actually the fifth anniversary of the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. So we will actually be bringing back the challenge this year. We're going to be doing it um, at a local grocery store. They've asked us to come and do the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge in front of all of their customers. So we're going to be dumping ice water all over us. So does anybody know why we did that? Why it was really cold water and why it was ALS? Can you guess? What happens when you have really, really cold water hit your body? Can you move really quickly? No, you kind of feel frozen, right? And that's, remember, that's what ALS kind of does to you. So you're not able to use your muscles. And that was the whole idea behind the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Is there anything we can do to help? That's a great question, Vittorio. Yes. I mean, as young people, you can definitely do lots to help. So um, I had a cousin a couple of summers ago. She was only six years old, but she did a lemonade stand. And she raised money and she gave it to us. And then we gave it to the researchers. So that's something really simple you can do. I had another friend. She did a speech on ALS. So you know when you have to do speeches at school? She did hers on ALS and talked about it. And there's tons of things you can do. Definitely, Vittorio and Julianne, you guys are at ages where you can volunteer at one of our events. You can help us raise awareness. You could come to that Ice Bucket Challenge and ask people for donations, ask people to do the Ice Bucket Challenge with us. So you can, there's tons of things that you guys can do as young people. Does your charity have like a tagline or something? Yes, we actually do. And if you read my shirt again, it says make ALS, make ALS history. So that's definitely the vision of our charity. We want to see ALS gone. We want it to be in the past. We want it history. So um, that is definitely something that we put on everything that we, we share on social media so we, and our shirts. It's make ALS history. Okay, guys, so is there one thing you've learned today or that you're going to take away from our little time together? Make ALS history. That's awesome. Thanks so much for listening again, and I hope we really do make ALS history soon. I hope you liked our episode today. It's pretty neat to see how Glorian decorated her bags and made them more attractive. So if you have any bags or crafts lying around, this is one way you can jazz it up and make it look new and unique. And how did you like our trip to the science lab today? Did you learn the trick to balancing the bird? You can try it at home and experiment. And as always, our rated PG was fun. Do you have a karaoke at home or have you tried one? It's really a lot of fun. It doesn't matter if you're out of tune as long as you sing from the heart. And lastly, we heard again from Sherry regarding ALS and what her charity does to raise money for research. Have you tried the Ice Bucket Challenge yet? Right now, there's no cure for ALS. And I hope the doctors can find one someday. Or maybe one of you guys will be able to find the cure for this disease and all the other illnesses in the world. So, till next time on our epic adventure. Thank you.